So in the past, most of my tests have been CPU-oriented tests, as most games prioritize CPU power over GPU. However, through your help, I finally found a game that is GPU-bound. In fact, Wreckfest uses 100% GPU while only using 40-50% to 50 of the CPU, which again, is usually the opposite in most games like Genshin or even Resident Evil to name a few. Now, as usual, I will conduct an FPS test and then compare these results at the end of this video. Moving on to settings, I pretty much maxed out all the graphical settings. One thing I must note, like many other games, iOS seems to have a slightly higher in-game resolution and game textures when compared to the Android version. iOS maxes out exactly 978p, However, I will know for sure once the devs get back to me with accurate in-game resolution for Android devices. Nevertheless, moving on to the test, because of how short each racing round is, and due to the fact that it takes more than a round to cause significant throttle, I decided to show the results of the second round for each phone, since the first round both were pretty tied in FPS averages and experienced very little throttle as there wasn't much stress. However, in this second round, it's quite clear both devices are starting to struggle, as you'll soon see. Now, if we look at temperature for both of these devices after this second round, they are exactly the same. Both are peaking up to 36 Celsius, which is quite good given the GPU is being maxed out and there is significant throttling happening. On a good note, neither phone felt hot or really warm when I picked it up. If I had to choose based on the feeling, the Galaxy S23 Ultra felt the most comfortable in regards to temperature. Last but not least, moving on to FPS averages, I do have a lot to say, but to make things concise, let's segment everything into the good, the bad, and the ugly. So starting with the good, as we can see, the iPhone 15 Pro Max barely comes on top in this GPU test, averaging 55.8 frames per second in this second round. While the S23 Ultra follows very closely at a 54.3 frames per second. Now, if we quickly look at GPU usage, the iPhone actually used less as the iPhone used 85%, while the S23 Ultra actually used more GPU at 95%. Which is quite interesting because this does technically mean the A17 Pro has a stronger GPU than the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. But now that we're talking about the GPU, let's talk about the bad. In my opinion, the iPhone 15 Pro Max actually lost this test. FPS averages does not always reflect better gaming experience. If we look at the 1% lows within the FPS, the S23 Ultra actually only dropped to 42 FPS, while the iPhone dropped to 35 FPS. Even more, the S23 Ultra only dropped in the very beginning and then practically maintained a steady high 40 and low to mid 50 FPS range. The S23 Ultra had a much smoother experience, while the iPhone felt very janky at times, and FPS drops were very noticeable and distracting. 
In my opinion, 1% FPS lows are just as important as the FPS average. Last, as we conclude, I will talk about the ugly. The iPhone 15 Pro Max barely beat the S23 Ultra in this test, which isn't really a surprise as we already saw this in a 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme test. However, because how razor close these results are, I don't see how Apple can compete in the GPU test with a Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 or the upcoming S24 Ultra. Apple's only saving grace is that most mobile games are CPU bound and not GPU heavy. Therefore, I do suspect that the iPhone will still go toe to toe in most FPS gaming tests with the S24 Ultra. However, for games solely focusing on GPU, Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 will definitely take the lead. Anyways, thanks for watching, stay safe, and see you all next time.